Well, we've got a great week coming up. Welcome to those of you joining us online. We're glad to have you with us tonight. We would love having you here with us in person as well. If you haven't been here for a while, please come out and see the, the crowd that we've gathered. We have uh, really started to grow to a, a level. I'm just, how many of you see that and feel that growth taking place? It's great to be here, here together tonight. We're on chapter five already, if you can believe it. Uh, mentioning our new book coming up, we do have those in, but um, I think I, I probably need to rephrase how I ask us to sign up because it's a little misleading if I ask you to put two, which I did, but then we're not taking two spots. And so now we'll go to the, the um, kind of the standard that if you want a book, everybody who wants a book, just put your name down because that gives me more accurate. I just don't want to think we have 30 books available when we already have 30 accounted for. And so we are down, I think I counted earlier, we have 21, we have nine left. And we've already ordered, we already have the books in. And so we have nine books left. And again, you can get that on a Kindle if you want that on Amazon for $6.95. And then there was a, um, an ebook or something you could get uh, for $5.95 as well. So. If you wanted to do the digital copy, you can do that also. The book is six dollars, sir. Yeah, or is it nine? Nine dollars. I'm sorry, nine dollars. Uh, and that book is is again we have them here, and the sign up is out at the info booth. So if you, I did go through and, and rewrite, so it's accurate now. So if you want one, or you and your spouse just put both your names on a separate line, and we'll get that to you. Well, let's open in a word of prayer tonight. We're gonna talk about learning to follow the inward witness. Father, we just thank you for this word tonight. Lord, we're about to eat of this meal, and we thank you that the meal that you prepared for us by your Holy Spirit's leading and guiding, Lord, we thank you that we're well nourished from it. Father, we thank you that in it that we have things unlocked within us, truths that take hold with inside of our spirit, Lord, and that would help us to change the outward us. Father, we thank you tonight that we're attentive and that our minds are sharp and receptive, and we give you praise for it tonight in Jesus' name. We all said, amen. amen. You guys look great. You sound great. You sounded great worshiping. Let's take a look right off the bat tonight at 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16. We don't have a whole lot of scripture references tonight. And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, as God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. The Bible says that we as believers are the temple of the living God. This amazing truth must become a living reality in our daily life. We cannot learn to respond to situations from our heart unless we are ever conscious of the presence of the Holy Spirit. He dwells within your spirit to guide and direct you in every area. You and I don't need God to speak a word to you through other people. He may confirm through others what he has already said to you in your own spirit. But for the most part, he's not going to use prophets or spectacular supernatural events to guide your life. He's going to lead you by who? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit speaking to who? Your head? Your spirit. Speaking to your spirit. Now, how many of you have had someone come up to you and say, God told me to relay this message to you? How many of you have experienced that, that when it was accurate and when it wasn't? Now, how we handle when it wasn't is just as important as how we handle when it was. We have to be wise and, and understand and, and be a Christian. Thank you for that word. Now, if it's demonic, how many of you have that? There's times people try and speak the word, it's demonic. They don't think that. They're not, rrr, rrr, rrr. that's not how it's coming out, okay? Oh, where'd that come from? But what they're doing, we were, we were talking with someone earlier about this. 
How many of you know the devil is always trying to shoot his arrows into our what? Our spirit mm -hmm. to kill that spirit and that affects our flesh. And when our flesh is uh, given into, so to speak, or yielded to, what result do we get? Good or bad? Uh -huh. Always, every time. But when we yield to our spirit, we get a good result. See, sometimes we may be the one talking to people. Rrr, rrr. Say, what? What's wrong with PT? That's more than Snickers. <laughs> That's more. <laughs> Woo! Oh, boy. But to know, you know what, Lord? Is, am I being impacted by my heart? My spirit, or am I letting my head get involved? How many of you know when our heads get involved, trouble's on the way? And so, you know, the Bible says that we're to ask God for wisdom. It says in James, if any of you lack wisdom, ask God for it, who graciously will give it, deliberately will give it. It's kind of a, one of those, well, I, I got to ask every day because... I need wisdom every day. There's multiple times a day, Lord, give me wisdom. Anyone been there? Amen. Holy Spirit, give me wisdom that I don't speak or say something or do something. And then even still, I can pray that, but my flesh has to get in line with that. Because I may want that, my spirit may desire that, but my flesh may want to do its thing. Nope, get back in here. Get back in here. We have to rein that in. And there will be people that will come into our lives and say, God told me to tell you this. Well, I will just tell you this. God can tell any of us that directly. Any of us that directly. Meaning, if that is indeed true, then when that person gives you that information, it will affirm what you already know. Does that make sense? Because there'll be people who will speak things that your spirit doesn't, I, I don't jive with that. It, it, it's not, that's not, no, I'm not, I'm not feeling that that's right, that's not accurate. So in it, we have to understand, well, if God told you that, why didn't he tell me that? Like, he'll talk to me too, you, you know, like. And so in it, I've had people say, hey, Pastor Tony, the Holy Spirit put this in my heart for you. I said, I received that. I've already been, he's been dealing with me on that. Or he's already spoken to me about that. And, and you're confirming that or affirming that word. And I've had other people say, Pastor Tony, I believe God said you're going to give me that guitar. And I said, I know you didn't hear the Lord. <laughs> I know you didn't hear it. And I say that in jest because I've given away a lot of guitars. Just gave a one way of... Uh, one recently. But I have had people say that, trying to make it, well, the, the Lord just, he wants you to give me that. Well, when he tells me that, I'll call you. Let me have your number. How do you know? Because what? The devil masquerades as what? An angel of light also. And, 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 and again, we're not fighting people. We're fighting powers and principalities of this dark world. Rulers of and, and evil spirits that are trying to get involved and cause conflict. And as believers, we have to understand the Holy Spirit is going to lead us not through someone else telling us this is what to do. Now, listen, that's what pastors are for. That's what church is for. He, from the top down, pastor is leading us, but God speaks to you just as much as he speaks to us. You can get so consumed with seeking guidance through others that you miss what God is saying to your own heart. Your Heavenly Father wants you to train your human spirit so you can walk closely with Him. As you do this, you will get to the place where you can hear Him clearly when He speaks to you. The number one way God leads us is through the inward witness of the Holy Spirit in our spirits. Some people describe them this as an inward intuition. That's just a different term referring to the same thing. The inward witness of the Holy Spirit is an inner knowing. You don't always know how or why you know something. But what you know is as real in your spirit as if someone had spoken it in your ear. Underline this. This inner knowing will never 
contradict the word of God. That's why we have to know the word. We have to back up this knowing, these, these thoughts that come to us. What's the word of God say about that? It's the Holy Spirit communicating with your spirit. He wants to give you and I wisdom, guidance, and comfort, whatever we need at a particular moment. Any believer can be led by the inward witness of the Holy Spirit. In fact, baby Christians can be more sensitive than older Christians who have never developed their spirit. New believers are usually very aware of the dramatic change that took place on the inside of them. They're especially conscious of the Holy Spirit's presence. This makes it easy for them to follow the direction of the Holy Spirit as he speaks to their heart. Over the years, I've had baby Christians tell me about certain meetings they've attended. And they said, we just knew there was something wrong with what that preacher taught. These believers didn't know much about the Bible. They hadn't been born again long enough to intellectually understand the problem in the sermon they had heard. Understand that. They didn't even have enough history and background to know whether what was being said was true or not in their head because they had no knowledge of we've never heard of this before we're new but their spirits something's off it sounds good but it doesn't feel right that's a new belief well how come some of those who have been believing longer don't feel and sense those same things because they've not engaged with that consistently, continually. They've let go of that and their hearts may have not become necessarily seared but just hardened to the things of the Spirit by the day-to-day -day and the cares of life and the kids and the grandkids and the job and the money and wife and all that comes with it. Husbands. And, and in it, the devil's trying the whole time to just get us to do this to the best of our ability, to be good enough, to do the right things, to say the right things and not the wrong things, to not think bad thoughts, to not treat people poorly, and just to do it, uh, do it all right. How many of you know that's impossible? <laughs> it, it, in our flesh. In the spirit, it's not, because Jesus demonstrated that. It can be done. He walked a sinless life in this same dirt suit that we have. He did it. Yeah. It can be done. But what did he do that maybe we don't do? He spent a lot of time with the Father, continually praying, continually getting filled and empty, filled and empty. Filled and empty, not worried about his schedule and who was keeping him or who was, but filled so he could be empty. Why? For the glory of God. He had given his life away. Now we sometimes want to hold on to some of it and, and then have God involved in some of it. And I've been there, and, and, and I think we all struggle with that in some area of our life. I don't think anybody is completely surrendered in every area. Otherwise, you'd be perfect. You may as be in heaven. You know? We've got to walk this out, but, but it's not going to be in our own strength. And it's not based on, did we do it all right? He knew before he asked Jesus, can you step down out of that throne and, 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 and set aside all your deity? And can you go down there and fix this mess that's been made? And, and, and the people that I'm asking you to go do that for, some of them are going to spit on you on your way to do it. Some of them are going to pull your beard out on, on your way to do it, on your way to save them, and curse you, punch you. And he still did it. Because he loved us. So if that's true... Is he really bothered when we have an error? If our heart is for him, if we're striving to live for him, if we're, what he may be bothered by is when we allow those errors to just continue to pile up to the point where we just allow them to rule our life. He would be bothered by us not 
turning those things over to him. What's the word say? Cast your cares on me, for I care for you. My burden is easy. My yoke is light. But see, sometimes as believers, we, we don't understand that. He really does want to carry these things. And new believers sometimes take a hold of that. They, they see that and they say, you know what, I'm going to take God at his word. Like I've said, my mom prayed over a refrigerator that was dying and she was so, she believed it in her heart, but her head got involved and, 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 and the Holy Spirit told her, lay hands on that and pray for it. She hadn't been saved very long. And she's thought, well, okay, but I'm going to close all the doors and the windows and the curtains because people are think I'm crazy. <laughs> but she did it, and it ran 18 years past that date. She was a new believer who heard something and said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it in the privacy of my own home <laughs> where no one else can see me. I'm going to go for this. And she realized why it worked for her. She realized because it's not her that has to produce the result. She realized in that, I'll call it infancy stage of Christianity, that it was his responsibility to prove what he said. It was just her responsibility to do what he said. <laughs> so, you know, that's the same for us tonight goes on to say this. On the other hand, I've heard of supposedly mature Christians going to meetings where a minister was preaching wrong doctrine and they swallowed it hook, line, and sinker. They didn't even bother to compare it with the Word or to check their spirits for the Holy Spirit's warning. Anyone ever had that Holy Spirit warning in your heart? In your spirit? They choose not to esteem the presence of the Holy Spirit within them as they should have. When some of these mature believers realize they've missed it, many times they say, something bothered me about that teaching when I first heard it, but I didn't know what it was. Because the minister was well known, they just went along with it. Now I want you to underline this, outline it. Pastor would say this, I would say this. We don't care who is preaching. If you have a check in your spirit about what's being said, don't ignore it. Listen to what your spirit is telling you. Study the word to see if that teaching lines up with it. Now that's the key. Study the word. Make sure that if you're taking error to someone, it is indeed an error. Make sure we know the word. That's why it's important, scripture says, for us to rightly divide the truth. That we know what it is. Why? Because you're not always going to have a group of people with you in the moment you need the word. You're not always going to have access to someone the moment you need an encouraging word or you need a prayer. Anyone ever tried to get through to someone? They don't answer their phone. So frustrating. Why do you have a phone? Why am I paying for a phone if you're not going to answer the phone? What's the point of having a phone? Anyone had that conversation before? I'm sorry, I was away from my phone. You can't be away from your phone. What if there's an emergency? What's the emergency? I need some peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but at the same time, it's sometimes God, we're trying, we're trying to communicate, trying to communicate with like we're not getting through. Well, are we trying to communicate with our spirit or our head? Amen. And if I could just, if I could just get this in my head. No, until you get it in your heart. It'll, it'll make its way to your head, but it's got to start in your heart. And then we process that. We think about it. We allow the Holy Spirit to help change our thinking. It goes on to say this. Always make the Word of God your standard for truth. This will help you train your spirit. For example, you don't need to check with the Holy Spirit to see if it's all right for you to marry an unbeliever. The Bible already plainly tells you it's not right. And the Holy Spirit will never tell you anything different from the Word. As I said before, anytime the Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit, it will always be in line with the Word. Amen. Every believer has a responsibility to become sensitive to the inward witness of the Holy Spirit. That God designed, that's God's design for us. He wants to guide us in spiritual and physical matters. He wants to help us with our relationships, emotions, thoughts, 
and even finances. We desperately need the Holy Spirit's guidance. In today's society, we are confronted with so many decisions. There are the minor decisions like which car we should buy, then major decisions about career and marriage. God wants to give us wisdom in every situation, both big and small. Now underline this, don't limit God in your life. Don't just seek his guidance for matters you think are big enough for him to be concerned about. He wants to direct you in your personal life and in your job or ministry. He wants to guide you in your leisure activities and your relationships with other people. Underline this, God is interested in everything that you do. Did you know that? He's interested in everything that you do. And the devil wants to make us think he doesn't want to be involved in anything that we do because we're unworthy of it. Listen, if we think that we'll ever be worthy of it, that means that we had to earn it. It's not earned. Jesus, his shed blood, made you and I worthy. Period. It, that blood shed for us made us worthy. It, it made us, when we accept Jesus and we release our faith, it put us in right standing with God, joint heirs with him. Joint heirs with Jesus. Think about that. That means everything he has is mine too. Well, no, because that's everything he has is mine too. Well, no, that's true. Everything he has is mine too. Everything. See, we're going to learn in this new book that God had a plan for the earth for the world. Satan had a plan for the world. God had a plan to redeem the world and sent Jesus. When Jesus defeated the devil, he, he and, and all authority, scripture says, was transferred to him. He then did what with it? Held on to it? Say it louder, Mr. Paul. Yeah, he gave it to us. He didn't need to hold on to it. It's already his. He gave it to us. So that authority that we have means that he's, he's paid a great price for us, so he must be interested in me. He must want to know the details of my life and be involved but I have to give him access. He goes on to say this, when you have decisions to make, when you need wisdom, it helps and it's important to check your spirit and receive the Holy Spirit's help. Now let's look at James chapter one. That's not in your book tonight. We're gonna to jump off onto here for just a second because he's talking about wisdom, when you need wisdom. If you need wisdom, that shouldn't say if, should it? When you need wisdom, Ask your generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. <clears throat> Such people should not expect, no, go back to six. We went to, there we go. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of, the sea that's blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are what? Unstable. <laughs> In everything they do. Well, do you and I live in that same world? Well, do you and I need wisdom to deal with unstable people? whose loyalty is, not, is divided between God and the world. You know, we have to understand that our loyalty is to be to him and him alone. The world has nothing to offer but death. This world is, will be destroyed. People cling to this world and try and save this earth. It's, God's going to destroy you at some point. Why? Because there's a bigger plan. He goes on to say this, 
Maybe there's a conflict between you and another person. Begin to seek the Lord about that matter. As you listen to your heart, the Holy Spirit will show you the source of the problem. He'll give you wisdom to change the situation. There's another important reason to listen to your heart. The Holy Spirit may want to use you to help someone in need. I heard about a Raymond Bible training college student who was able to help save someone's life. The student worked as an auto body shop at an auto body shop near our campus. Late one night, he had a strong urging to close the shop an hour early and leave immediately. The Raymond student listened to his heart and obeyed the Holy Spirit's leading. As the student stepped outside to lock the door, he heard a noise. It sounded like someone groaning. The groaning stopped, and seeing nothing, he went to his car. Just as he reached his car, he heard the moaning again. Looking around, he saw a small light on the ground across the street. He went to investigate and found a man lying unconscious on the grass next to a wrecked motorcycle. The injured man had no identification on him, just a cross pendant around his neck. The Raymond student laid hands on him and prayed that he would live and not die, and then he ran back to the shop to call for help. While he was waiting for the ambulance to arrive, the Raymond student went back to the injured man and spoke the word of God over him. Later, this student, Raymond student, found out that the injured man was also a Raymond student. He had lost control of his motorcycle on the dark, winding street. In spite of his extensive injuries, he experienced a quick and miraculous recovery. Doctors told him that most people in his condition don't live, much less fully recover. Praise God for the inward witness of the Holy Spirit. The streets where this motorcycle accident occurred is, a, is dark and usually deserted late at night. Without the Holy Spirit help the injured Rama student may not have received assistance until the next morning but the Holy Spirit knew the injured young man needed help immediately he found a believer near nearby underlying this who knew how to hear his voice and guided that believer to the right place at the right time the Holy Spirit led that man there the Holy Spirit directed him to that man how important it is to be led by the Holy Spirit whether in small matters or in times of crisis. Now we're going to stop there tonight because I want to share a few things with you and then close in prayer. Then we have some prayer requests and we'll have a discussion here. But how many of you saw the uh, family sitting over here Sunday morning behind Will and Katie, that whole, whole row? I thought that that was your family. I thought, I, I didn't ask because it was so busy that... I thought, well, you just had more family come to join you. And uh, as they're walking out, I, I just said, hey, it's great to, to meet you guys. I'm glad to have you with us today. And I thought they were going to say, yeah, we know Will and Katie. And you know, the lady said, well, that's the, uh, thank you for having us. We're happy to be here. You may know this guy. And she points to the man. And I look at him and I have no idea who he is. And, you know, that happens to us sometimes. And so I said, um, I'm sorry. He said, you don't remember me, do you? And I said, no, sir, I'm sorry. I sure don't. But I'm glad you were here today. And he said, do you remember Walmart a year ago when my <clears throat> wife was pregnant? Now, how many of you remember that story? Someone gave us some money on a Sunday morning, and, and, and when that happens, we're always grateful and thankful. And it, it was a blessing, but at, at that moment, that money wasn't for me. Someone gave us money. It wasn't for me. I just knew. And they said, well, God told me to give it to you. All right, but it's not for me. No, well, do whatever with it. Okay. So we're at Walmart, and, I, and, and then the Holy Spirit told me to bless these people specifically. It was these people specifically with that money and I said well let me see what they got in the cart first Holy Spirit <laughs> oh we all do it and he said no that's not what I said give him the money and I, I okay and then we got shopping and doing stuff and I lost track of them and then, it, then how many of you are thankful the Holy Spirit gave you a second chance third chance fourth chance he stirred my heart hey what did I tell you to do go do that now I'm looking for them they're gone gone I see, and I see him. He's by the bathroom. He's waiting. His wife must be in the restroom. So I go straight for him. And I, and I, and I walk up to him, and again, I, I'm a pastor. You know, I, I, I don't know 
who you are, but I feel like God wants you to know he loves you. And boom, I just want to give you that. And I was going to walk away. And he grabbed hold of me, and he's like, wait, you don't understand. And he's like, my wife, you know, she's pregnant, and she came out of the restroom about that time. And he's crying. And I'm crying. Because he's crying. Like, stop crying. Make me cry. <laughs> We're Walmart. We don't, there's no crying in Walmart. <laughs> Unless you go there, then there's a lot of crying. <laughs> oh, just cry on your way there, please, Lord. But uh, so anyway, long story short, I talked to him, and, 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 and we just share, we, you know, we don't, we're glad you're blessed. We, we love Jesus, and we want you to know Jesus loves you. And where are you from? Oh, I think Jordan or somewhere around here. This was a year ago. And so when they show up, so I don't have any clue that that's who it was. So he said, the interaction you had with me at Walmart changed my life. And I said, well, first of all, God changed your life. I didn't do anything. Well, you did. You, you did what he told you to do. See, my wife and I, we were two weeks pregnant, we, two weeks before delivery, and we had no money at all. We had what we had in the cart, which was potatoes and mac and cheese and noodles and things like that. We... That's all we had. We didn't know what we were going to do for diapers, and we didn't know what we were going to do for, we had no idea. And I hadn't talked to God in a long time, and I asked him that day, Lord, send someone, if you're real, to give us some help. We need some help. How many of you know, there's a lot of people in Walmart. You think that in my natural self, needing a Snickers at 1230 in the afternoon on a Sunday? Yeah is going to look and see just the right person? I'm going to know how to do that? Come on. And so out of it, he went on to say that he had been estranged from some family and was able to, out of all that, gave his you know life to, to Jesus. His family had been living for Jesus. And, and in it, uh, he, he had a phone call out of the blue that some family you haven't been able to, to ever really be around, I, they want to get to know you, and, 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 and we want to make that happen. You know, and, and look, this has nothing to do with any person. It could be Jim, Joe, you know, doesn't matter. It's listening to that voice and doing what he says. That's it. It's that simple. And anyone could come along and, and do what was done there. Anyone who's willing to listen and say, Lord, what do you want? I, because, it, you know, how many of you know somebody gives you some money and it was a decent amount of money? Wow, your head goes, wow, that's awesome. But your spirit, mm, that's not for me. Well, Lord, if it's not for me, who's it for? Well, I've got to be ready to look and listen. Now, in it, that was a blessing, and I'm sure you've all been there. You've all probably had tales where you've blessed someone and later on, but it completely encouraged my faith in the fact that it, it reminded me that it's not about my act. It's about what God's trying to do through me or through the person. It's not about the person. Nothing to do with me. But in it, to see that genuine. And if you were over there, Donna was over there, I think. She saw some of that. It, it was genuine. And it brought joy to me. Why? Because a lot of times, how many of you have sown seed and never seen a return on it? Mm -hmm. It's encouraging when you see a return on something that you've done in the spirit realm and you've put your faith out there and someone says, yeah, because you, God has changed my life. Praise God. What's that make you want to do? Do it again. Mm -hmm. But you got to be careful, and I have to be careful because we can like that feeling and get out of balance. and want to just start doing stuff God didn't tell us to do. And so, again, it's important that we keep this Holy Spirit front and center in our life. And when we're in need of anything, that's what he is there for. You could just need some strength. You may be going into a meeting at work. Maybe you have a client that's just a, a big client, or maybe you have... You know, a lot going on. I know with school, there's a lot going on with some folks right now. Remember, the Holy Spirit has given us everything we need to accomplish what's before us. All we have to do is what he says to do, when he says to do it, and it'll work out. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. 
It's not going to happen just because we have to be listening. We have to be reading. We have to be studying the Word. Jesus, the Word made flesh. To know Him. To know what His Word says. Why? So that we can uphold it, defend it, speak it. Listen, I said it last week. It's too late to ask for oil when the oil is required. Too late. Keep your oil full. Keep your lamps full. Keep yourselves full of the Holy Spirit. The more of this flesh that the Holy Spirit strips out of me, the better. I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't like the, that ugly side of me. That flesh side like it. And, and how many of you feel like I'm giving less and less place in my life to that? Anyone? Amen. I feel that way in my life too. I feel like we're all going that direction and I love that. We're going to close in prayer tonight and then we'll just uh, wrap up our evening. Father, we thank you for this time together. Lord, we ask that as we've heard these things, they won't just merely be good things we've heard, but they would be truths that would be applied to our life, Lord, that would help us change how we live. Help us to be determined, Father, to be consistent, to be persistent in our pursuit of you. We thank you for a supernatural desire being stirred up within us even now, Lord, to press in. Where can we go apart from you? As Peter said, you hold the words of eternal life. Thank you tonight for your goodness, and we thank you for keeping us as we go, thank you for being with those who are out and, and watching us online as well, Father. Thank you for blessing their homes and ministering to them and to their spirit, encouraging them and, and whatever they're in need of. Father, we thank you that they have it in you. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. 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 Well, we're going to take a few minutes here and, and just open it up for some discussion, and then we have a prayer request we'll close with at the end tonight.